I don't use dimension patterns that much anymore. I'm more likely to use a direction pattern, but it's the default type you are presented with when you start a pattern. So it's helpful to know what it is. And there are a couple of interesting aspects about using dimensions and patterns that you should know about. Before I get started, I'm going to use the trick where I'm going to apply a different color to the outside surfaces of my part, just so that my instances will pop out in a different color. So even though my part is the default gray color, my outside surfaces have this blue color. Now let's go about creating a feature that we can pattern. And I'm gonna start off by creating a sketch on this surface. Let me hit the sketch button and let's go to our sketch orientation. And for this one, I'm just gonna create a simple rectangle and sketch it out. And let's change the dimensions. Let's make this offset here a value of 1. And I'm going to change this one to a value of 0.5. And let's change the width over here to 1.5. And this width over here to a value of 1. Actually, let's make it a little further off from the side. That is good. So let's hit the check mark. And now I will extrude this. And let's extrude it to a height of 1. And let's throw some taper on here. Go to the Options tab, Add Taper. And let's throw in about 5 degrees of taper on there. So we have our feature created. Now I want to pattern it. So you can select the feature. And from the mini toolbar, you can choose Pattern. You can also choose Pattern from the ribbon. And by default, you are given the type dimension. And that's, again, the most basic kind of pattern that you have in Creo Parametric. If you hold down the right mouse button in the mini toolbar, you can choose to one of the other different pattern types. But again, I want to show you how to use a dimension pattern. And the reason that it is called a dimension pattern is that you are going to apply increments to different dimensions that are associated with the feature. And you can see that I have a number of different dimensions here. I have the dimensions from the sketch, the offset from the two sides of the part, and we have the width of the feature and the depth of the feature, and here we have the height of the feature and then the taper angle. So we can select any of those different dimensions to increment. First off, let me select this dimension that locates it from the side, and when I click on it, you're going to get a little field, and that field is not to modify the dimension. That field is to define the increment, the spacing from this instance to the next instance. Maybe I want to use a spacing of 2.5, and I'll hit the Enter key, and you get a preview dot for where the instance is going to be created. And from the dashboard, we can control the number of members. Let's say I say, oh, let's see what six will look like. You can see the preview dots. And you're like, oh, wait, maybe, maybe I want one more. So let's change this one. And I'll click the seven. And if I'm happy with that, I can hit the check mark. And there we have our pattern created. And this is a pattern created in one direction. I can select that pattern and edit definition from the mini toolbar. And I can define additional dimensions that I want to increment in the first and or second directions. Let me open up the dimensions tab. If you want to create a pattern in a second direction, you can click here to specify those dimensions. You can also hold down the right mouse button and activate the dimension, excuse me, direction to dimensions collector. And I will select that. And now I could pick, say, this dimension over here. And maybe I want to increment that value of 2.5 as well. And that way you can see the preview dots that are being generated. And maybe in this direction I want to create four instances. And I say, oh, wait, you know what? That's getting a little too close to the edge of the part. Maybe I want to have three instances over here. And maybe I want to change the spacing over here to a value of four. Nope, way too big. Let's use a value of three. And if I'm happy with that, I can hit the check mark. And there I have the different instances created. Let's go back to the pattern. Sometimes you create a pattern and you're like, hey, this pattern's great, except there are a few instances that I don't want. 
you'll notice that you have the different dots indicating where the instances are going to be created. You can click on some of those preview dots if you want to disable individual instances like these three here in the middle. Then I can hit the check mark and those three particular instances go away. Later on, if I decide that I want them back, I can edit definition and click on the dots again so that they turn yellow and hit the check mark. And one thing I want to mention about the preview dots is that the appearance of these has changed appearance uh, over the different versions. So if you're using older versions like Creo 3.0, I believe they actually show up as white circles that you can click on and when you disable them, they turn black. Now they appear as black circles with like a white and then orange halo around them. And again, if you click on them, they're just going to lose that orangish halo and then those instances will be disabled. Now, you can increment more than one dimension in either of the two directions. Let me show you what I mean by this. I am going to edit definition. And first off, let's say I, in the first direction, I want them to get taller as they are being created. Let's go to the dimensions tab and we can see that the d direction one dimensions collector is still activated. I can hold down the control key. Let me zoom in here. I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to select the height dimension. And for the height dimension, let's increment this a value of 0.25. And so as we create them now, they're going to get taller as the instances are created. You can see in the first direction, the height is increasing. So that is how you can add a dimension to the first direction. And let's edit definition again. And I can go back to the dimensions tab and click in the direction to collector or right mouse click and hold and choose the direction to dimensions collector. And maybe I want to increment the width and I'm holding down the control key and picking this. And maybe I just want them to get slightly wider. So I'm going to use a value of, uh, let's use 0.25 again. And Again, the dimension is not going to change here on the screen, but if you take a look on the dimensions tab, here we have the increment specified. Let's hit the check mark. And now you can see, you probably see my instances are getting wider. If it's not obvious, we can edit definition and go to the dimensions tab. And inside here, type in a value and hit the check mark. Now you can definitely see that they are getting wider in the second direction as they are being created. So you can see that the first instance and the last instance are very different. This one is taller and wider. And let's go back to the pattern edit definition. I want to point out from the options tab, we have this regeneration option. You have three different choices. The default choice is general. What that means is that your different instances can change in shape. The different dimensions associated with the feature can change as the pattern is created and they can even run off onto other surfaces. And as it says in the tooltip, this is the most robust option, but it can take longer to regenerate. There is the variable option in which the uh, members can change shape, they can go off to other surfaces, but they're not allowed to intersect each other. And that's when the difference is the big difference between variable and general. General, if your instances intersect each other, it's okay. Variable, they are not allowed to intersect, and if they intersect, you're going to get a regeneration failure. And identical is the most restrictive. You're not allowed to change the different dimensions associated with the feature. They're not allowed to run off onto different surfaces and they're not allowed to intersect. And in this case here, I might want to use the variable option because I can see some improvements in regeneration for my different instances, although they look the same. As long as they're not going to intersect each other, the variable option will be faster. Let's go back to the pattern. If I go to the dimensions tab, you can notice that in here, we also have the ability to define the increment by a relation. Here we're using a numerical value for the increment, but you could also use some kind of equation to drive that. And to show that, I'm going to go to a different model. And 
Here I have one that gives me a lot more runway in order to create the different instances. So let's select this extrude and from the mini toolbar I can choose to create a pattern and let's increment this dimension and I'm going to give it an increment of let's say 40 and there we can see the instance that's created. I can say hey let's take a look at how maybe you know 20 of these would look. Oh way too many. Maybe I need to go back to the dimensions tab and make the increment smaller. And, okay, still just like a few too many. Uh, maybe I want to just kill that last one. Let's try value of 19 and then hit the check mark. So here we have our pattern and they are all of the same height. Well, let's say I want to use a relation to change the height as they're moving along there. I can edit definition and from the dimensions tab, I can then hold down the control key and select this dimension to appear and initially it's going to ask for some numerical increment I'm just going to type in in 20 and if I hit the check mark yeah they're steadily getting taller as they are being created but I want to use a relation to give this more of a sine wave shape so let us hit the edit definition and I can go to the dimensions tab and select this other dimension. And by the way, this is a really good case for changing the names of your dimensions. And I'm gonna show that for the next thing I am going to define with relations. But we can select this increment and then check the box to define this by a relation. Then click the edit button and we get the relations dialog box. And you get this nice dialog box that explains how to write the relation. And if you are writing the relation in the first direction, you're going to use the variables memb underscore v, lead underscore v, and idx1. If you're writing the relations in the second direction, you're going to use memb, short for member, underscore i, lead, oh, excuse me, I, and idx2, and also lead underscore v. And as it notes in here, you don't use member v and member i in the same relation because it depends on which direction that you're going into. I know there's a lot in there. But anyhow, I want to write this so that there's a sine wave change to the height. So I'm going to write my relation and I want the height dimension, which in this case here is member underscore V. And that's going to be equal to, and I want it to start off with that initial value. It has a height of 40. And then I'm going to add in my sine wave shape. And so I'm going to use some parentheses in here because I know I'm going to do some stuff. And it's going to be the sine. And depending on how many waves I want, I'm going to multiply that IDX number times a value. And let's say I want this to make about, I don't know, five instances to a single wave. Maybe I'll multiply this by 72 degrees because, again, 5 times 72 equals 360. And then I can multiply this by whatever scaling factor that I want to use. Uh, maybe I want to scale it by the height of the original height, which is lead V, or I could type in a numerical value. And the problem is sine of one uh, is equal to lead V. Uh, let's, and uh, sine of, excuse me, just doing the math here. Uh, let's see, remembering my sine curve, sine of 270 degrees is negative 1, and so if this is equal to negative 1 times lead V plus lead V. The height drops down to 0. I could get a regeneration failure. So let's divide this sine function portion by a value of 2. So the amplitude is going to go from plus 20 to minus 20, and that will change the height between a value of 20 and 60. You can do the math. All right, let's click the OK button and hit the check mark. And there you can see that we get our sine wave in here where it increases and then decreases and keeps on with that shape in here. And I want to point out the reason that I am showing you these different aspects is that you can have increments to different dim dimensions in the first or second direction, not just for dimension patterns, but also for direction patterns and axis patterns. So this ability to increment your different dimensions also applies to other different pattern types.